So the next speaker is Yu Sasaki from NTT. The title of the talk is Cryptanalysis on um, Merkle Damgård based Mac, Almost Universal Forgery and Distinguishing Edge Attacks. Uh, thank you for the introduction. So my name is Yu Sasaki. And first, of all, uh, first of all, I'd like to start a research summary. So in this paper, we present two generic attacks against uh, Merkle Damgård based Mac construction. Uh, which, instantiate, which instanti instantiates a narrow pipe macro negative hash. So the construction is described in the, fig in the figure, but uh, I will explain the details later. So we consider uh, two attacks. The first one is disting distinguishing age. In a previous read, it was be believed that the generic attack will cost to the n queries. But in this paper, we uh, gave the new attack, which only requires uh, the three times of the birthday queries, and uh, also birthday order uh, computational complexity. And then uh, we gave uh, another uh, attack called almost universal forgery attack. So that's the summary. Okay, so first I'd like to give the background and uh, then I will explain the generic distinguishing age and almost universal forgery. And finally I conclude my talk and give the future work. So this slide uh, describes a very fundamental uh, concept and which is a message authentication course. So it provides the integrity and the authenticity. So the, the sender and the receiver share the secret key K. Now when the sender sends the message M to the uh, receiver, he also sends the tag, which is computed by the hash function, uh, taking M and K as input. And then uh, after the receiver receives the M, he computes the tag value uh, by using the received M and uh, shared key K and check the match of the tag and his results. Then he can check other integrity and authenticity. Okay, uh, so in this paper, we analyze hash function based MAC. And this is the hash function structure, which are uh, the target of the paper. The first property is the marker Dangard domain extension. So in this framework, uh, the completion function is iteratively applied to compute the hash value. And another property is the narrow pipe structure. That means the size of the internal state and the size of the hash value is uh, the same. Now, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to say that most of widely used hash functions uh, fall into this category, like SHA-1 or SHA-2, uh, MD5, uh, RIPE MD, Whirlpool, whatever. Almost uh, all of them, all of them, it's a macro Dangard narrow pipe structure. So how to construct Mac scheme uh, by using hash function? So there is a classic Mac construction called the secret prefix Mac. The structure is pretty simple. So first, uh, the key, the secret key is processed as a first block, and then the message is computed. But unfortunately, uh, this construction is known to be vulnerable against the forgery attack. So the attack is also called length extension attack. So in this scheme, so the attacker first uh, query the message M1 and receives the tag. Then uh, he, so once he obtained the internal state value sigma, then uh, for any value of M2, he can compute sigma prime at offline. So the forgery will succeed with only complexity one. So how to prevent this attack? So one approach is appending the rings of the input message before the message is computed. So the scheme is called rings prepended MAC, in short, LP MAC. 
Now, actually, this construction prevents the length extension attack. Okay, so first the attacker asks one block message M1 and obtains the corresponding sigma. Then he appends another message M2. But in this case, the length prevent value becomes different. So the internal state value will change. So the, uh, this computation is no longer useful. So indeed, the uh, length uh, LP mark uh, works very well, and it has a security proof. So LP mark satisfies the prefix freeness, meaning uh, its meaning is any message is not the prefix of other messages. And uh, prefix free mark was proved to be a secure PRF up to two to the n over two queries. So this was done by Bellar et al. in 1996. Okay, then uh, let's consider the attack framework for MAC constructions. Uh, I think most popular attack framework is the forgery attack, but uh, considering the distinction is also possible. And in this context, we have two, uh, two frameworks of distinguishing attack. And one is called distinguishing R. And in this framework, the attacker aims to distinguish, distinguish the target construction from uh, the random or local computation. And, but for distinguishing R, generic attack is known. And the complexity is 2 to the n over 2. So this was uh, discovered by Prenel and Van Ostrot in 1995. Okay, then we have another uh, distinguish, distinguish, distinguishing attack called distinguishing H. So in this framework, so first the domain extension is fixed. Then the attacker tries to distinguish which compression function, uh, feature of H and R, it's a random function, is used in the, in the other compression function. So previously, it was believed that the generic attack will cause the tutors and complexity. But it was a folklore, so there is no uh, proof of this folklore. Okay, so given this background, what, uh, what happened before in history? The previous approach tried to find a distinction which is faster than the tutors and complexity because generic attack was believed to be tutors and. So most of them uh, combined the generic bus attack and dedicated the differential cryptanalysis. So because the previous attack required the bus attack, the number of queries, queries is always bigger than 2 to the n over 2. And because uh, the, the differential cryptanalysis is applied, the attack, attacking for rounds is quite hard. So here is the list of the previously published distinguishing H attack against LP mark. So first, uh, so SHA-1 is, was evaluated, but uh, it was only for reduced rounds, and the query is higher than the bus complexity. And uh, yeah, SHA-2 and the MD family were evaluated, and most of them are for reduced round, and the complexity is uh, bigger than 2 to the n over 2. So what I want to do now is stopping evaluating each, uh, each function separately. So I mean, I'd like to uh, propose a generic attack. And here is our results. So we propose a generic distinction H attack against LP mark instantiating a narrow pipe marker than that hash function. So because the attack is generic, the full rounds can be attacked. And the number of query is uh, three times of the possible complexity. And this is so almost optimal. And this indicates that the folklore for the NBIT security was incorrect. OK, then uh, I'd like to explain the uh, attack procedure. Okay, so here is the basic idea. So first, uh, please assume that an internal collision 
starting from different rings prevent strings can be generated. Okay? So first, the attacker queries two block message M1, M2, and obtains the corresponding uh, sigma, uh, uh, tag sigma. So for this message, so because the uh, block length is two, so it starts, the computation starts from here. Then uh, after first block, it will reach the internal collision, and for another message block, it will reach here, so the attacker can obtain the tag sigma. Then next, uh, he queries uh, three block messages. So because uh, the block length is three, the computation starts from here. And after one block, after the first block is computed, it reaches the internal collision. Then, uh, if M2 equals to M2 prime, uh, it will be here, and another M3, after another M3 prime, uh, he obtains the value of uh, H4, it's sigma prime. Okay, so now, so he obtains the value of H3, value of H4, and this message. So he collects all the information for the last block. That means he can easily check the function is H or something else. Okay, so if this assumption is satisfied, then we can uh, easily detect uh, H, which of H or R is instantiated. So how to detect the internal collision? Only with queries of different length. So the attacker wants to find the collision between these two, but unfortunately he can't see the value here. Okay, so the idea is, uh, after he obtained the sigma, he computes the second message block at offline. So this is offline simulation. So because, because there is no secret information here, he can, uh, he can do this very easily. So here is the exact attack procedure. Okay, so first, uh, the attacker fix the value of the second message Block, so M2 prime to a randomly chosen value. Any value is okay. Then uh, he prepares two to the n over two uh, different message for the first message block. And uh, queries these messages and obtain the corresponding sigma. And uh, at offline, he simulates the value after the second message block. And he stores the results in the memory. OK, in the next step, he prepares two to the n over two different mes two block messages, m1 prime and m2 prime. The m2 prime is always a fixed value. OK, so uh, now uh, he can check the collision between uh, this value and the sigma prime. So if the collision occurs, then uh, it may suggest a collision, internal collision here, or it, it is just collision in the second block. Okay. So the target goal is obtaining only internal collision. So to eliminate the noise, uh, for step four, he, for the matched M1 and M1 prime, he checks the match with different M2 prime. Then only uh, the internal collision can be obtained. OK, so this is the evaluation of the attack. So if the step four succeeds, then H is a target hash function. And uh, step one is just fixing the message. So of course, the complexity is negligible. And step two is also query the birthday message. So that means the query complexity is 2 to the n over 2. And he, do, he does the offline computation 2 to the n over 2 times. And in a straightforward way, he also needs a memory to store 2 to the n over 2 values. Then uh, step three is quite uh, simple. It's just a query of uh, 2 to the n over 2, two block messages. So the complexity is just double of the 2 to the n over 2. And the step four is just checking. So it's neg negligible. In total, the uh, complexity is like this. So everything is in the order of the birthday complexity. 
And please note, if you use the memory less meet in the middle of the tuck for step two and for step three, then the tuck can be memory less. So this can be negligible with only a small additional cost for query and complexity. Okay, so it is our generic distinction, distinguishing each attack. So if also something in your attack is applied, so why don't you consider a more strong attack, a much stronger attack? And actually we did it, and the attack is almost universal forgery attack. So the concept of almost universal forgery attack was introduced by Duncan Maital in the last year. So in this framework, so first the attacker will do some pre-computation or pre-query. After that, a target message is randomly given. And so this is an interesting point. Then the attacker can modify the one block of the given message. So almost, this is a, the attack target is almost the given message, but one block is modified. Okay, then they perform the forgery attack and the modified target. So this is the framework. But in this paper, we a, lit, a little bit lose the restriction. So in our attack, the first log 2L blocks are replaced and L is the size of the message. Okay, then let's consider the attack on LP mark. Okay, so according to this step, so first we want to do some pre-computation, but the problem is we don't know the target message, especially target message length. So length prepend value is not determined yet. So which pre-computation pre can you do? That's the problem. So the idea is uh, generate a multi-collision starting from various length prepend values. So this message block maps uh, this internal state to y and this internal state to y and this internal state to y. So if the given message is one block, then if you replace the, the message block with x, then you know that tag is y. And similarly, if the given message is eight block, and if you replace the first message block with x, then you know that the internal state would be y. So due to the multi-collision with different length prevent values, you can have some length prediction, I mean, length adjustment uh, facility. But unfortunately, uh, generating multi-collision is very inefficient. So uh, the idea is using the diamond structure, uh, which was originally uh, proposed by Kelsey and Kono for Harding attack. Then uh, in the birthday order, the multi-collision starting from eight different values can be constructed. But uh, because of the tree structure, we needed to replace the first log L block instead of one block. Okay. And this slide shows the potential applications of the, this kind of uh, structure, the diamond structure. The application is some connecting pro finding the connection problem. So you want to find the message which, connect, which starts from one chaining value and uh, hopefully reach some of the pre-computed structure. But you can't determine the total message length until you find the connection. Because in this part, uh, the modification can be applied for various message ranks, uh, such a structure can be useful, uh, uh, useful for connection problem of multi-targets with various message ranks. 
So one application is a long message attack. Yeah, un until you find the connection, you can say uh, the total message length. The another application is a harding attack, and which uh, finds the connection from this value or any of the node in the, in the construction. So until you know the depth of the node which is connected, you can't determine the uh, total message ranks. So uh, the diamond structure would be useful. OK. So uh, I conclude my talk and give some future work. So in this paper, we propose a generic distinction H attack and LPMAC. And the complexity is uh, just order of the birthday complexity. So the NBT security folklore is incorrect. And we show the more crypt analysis uh, called almost universal forgery on LPMAC. OK. Then uh, finally, uh, I will give some future research directions. So one direction is uh, finding a new problem on Mac in which a generic attack costs between 2 to the n over 2 and 2 to the n. So like almost a universal forgery attack, uh, you may uh, be able to find some new problem on the Mac, on the Mac security, which would be interesting. So another feature work is uh, finding a new application of a differential with probability higher than the 2 to the minus n. So previously, it was believed that a differential, as, as, long, as soon as a differential with probability slightly better than 2 to the minus n is found, then it can be converted to distinguish attack on Mac construction. So because we have some applications, so finding these problems would be nice. But in, the, in this paper, we showed that this conversion does not work. So uh, the distinguish each attack converted in such a way is worse than the generic attack. So finding the new application, so if we have this, so what can be done? So such pro finding such problem is uh, maybe interesting problem. Okay, that's about it. Thank you for your attention.